Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. There we go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Lord. I'm just grateful for this morning. Man, I'm, <laughs> what's amazing is I'm in this school and uh, just the goodness of God, just God just do just little blessings sometimes. One of my classmates this morning just knocked on my door and said, man, I just want to bless you with breakfast. And he handed me breakfast this morning. So that's why I'm a little bit behind. I was like, what in the world? I'm about to start this morning meditation. Who is this knocking at my door? And it was my classmate giving me breakfast. So uh, just praise the Lord. You know, it, it, I'm just grateful. A uh, little Burger King. But hey, you know what? I'm grateful for the Burger King. So your morning medicine, are you ready for your medicine? Are you ready for your medicine? Glory to God. We are gracious unto the Lord for the Lord is good. He is faithful. Today's prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 1 verse 33. Oh, I'm just grateful for unto the Lord. Sometimes we just got to be grateful unto God. And God just always has a way to remind us that he cares for us. And that he, you know, just blessed of the faithful. So just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33 says this. And I'm reading out the CSB version this morning. And the Bible says, but whoever listens to me will live securely and be undisturbed by the dread of danger. Be undisturbed by the dread of danger. Some translations from the New King James says, whoever listens to me will dwell in safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Be undisturbed by the dread or the fear of evil or any type of danger. And when you leave and hear that scripture, those words of wisdom for this morning, who wouldn't want to live where you're undisturbed by danger or whatever is happening? Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want to be undisturbed where it does not bother you? It does not unhinge you. It does not um, off knock you off balance or knock you, you know, off your feet. Who, who does not want to be undisturbed? I mean, that thing hit me this morning because everybody wants to be undisturbed. There are some things that has happened in people's lives that has continually disturbed them until this day. Things that have happened years and years and years and years ago. There are certain things right now that something can happen to you and you can be having a joyous morning and that little thing will disturb you and it will offset your whole day offset your whole week, or even sometimes offset your whole life. It can change the trajectory of your life. Who does not want to be undisturbed? Where the tribulations and circumstances and things in life don't get to me like they get to me or don't bother me like they seem to bother me. Who does not want to be undisturbed? So for this morning medicine, I want us to Take in these three things to help us be in a place of being undisturbed. It is possible. Why do I say it's possible? Because the Lord says it's possible in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33. But there's things that we have to take heed to to make it possible. So follow on along with me as I break down these three things for this morning. Because this morning today, we don't know what today is going to bring. But I know what we can bring to today. We can learn to be undisturbed. Number one. How do I learn to be undisturbed? Number one. Reverence. Reverence. How do I learn to be undisturbed? Reverence. This is important. Because Lord really unpacks this thing reverence why do you say reverence 
Well, if we go up a few verses to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, he says, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. King James says, the reverence of the Lord. And I love that reverence. I love the emphasis King James puts on it. He says, the reverence of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord. In order to learn to be undisturbed, I must have reverence first for the Lord. Notice that I was particular in what I had reverence for. Because when we face tribulations or we face circumstances, the question becomes, who are you reverencing? Who are you reverencing? When these things come, who do you show reverence to? Who? Even what? What gets your honor? What do you bow down to? What do you give in to? Who do you look for when you are approached with a tribulation or circumstances or that very issue that bothers you, that stressor? Who do you turn to? Do you look to self? Do you look to that fill in the blank? What do you reverence? What gets your attention? What sparks your response? What is at the center of your dialogue, of your behavior? What do you glorify? Do you glorify that the act of revenge? Do you glorify the act of giving them a piece of your mind? Do you glorify the flesh that you have to act in that way that you know is not pleasing to God so you reverence your flesh? You reverence that mouth of yours. Man, you got a tongue on you. I'm saying, what do you reverence? That's the number one thing of learning how to be undisturbed because Learning how to be undisturbed can only come from the Lord. So if I don't reverence the Lord, then I'm not in position to get what I need in order to be undisturbed. In a book of 2 Kings, I'm going to read a couple of things in 2 Kings. Well, no, 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 21. Ahab, and Ahab is familiar with Jezebel. But I want to read this scripture about Ahab. When God was going to bring some punishment upon Ahab, when God was going to allow some things uh, that was going to disturb Ahab's life. But look at what how Ahab responded. This is verse 27 in 1 Kings chapter 21. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put a sackcloth over his body and fasted. So that means... Uh, when they put on sackcloth, there's a grieving in that, meaning that's a response to something that is happening, something that is grievous. He lay down in sackcloth and walked around subdued. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? I will not bring disaster during his lifetime because he has humbled himself before me. I just want to emphasize that part of that verse disaster was coming something that was going to disturb ahab's life and you know what stopped that from coming that ahab humbled himself in other words he reverenced god he reverenced god he tore the bible says he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth that is a sign of reverence unto the Lord that I recognize God and I'm so dis I, look Lord I'm coming unto you reverence in the book of Exodus around the 30th 31st chapter Moses let me turn to that it's just a powerful verse in itself Moses says this to God as God was telling Moses that he wanted him to go in and conquer the land. And Moses tells God, 
that it doesn't matter where you send me as long as you go before me. Moses said, it doesn't matter where you send me, Lord, long as you go before me. And I'll find that. Speech. But it's around, a, it's, it's an exodus around the 30th some chapter, something like that. But Moses told God that, Lord, I don't care where you send me. As long as you send you first. Reverence. Moses recognized that there's a land for to be taken, but Lord, I don't know what's going to happen in that land. There's some things that are going to uh, I'm going to face in that land. There's some trouble. There's some situations. There's some circumstances. So I can't go without you. I'm saying, do you have that reverence for the Lord? When you face a situation, when you face a circumstance, when you face something that bothers you, when you face something that stresses you. Do you have that attitude as God, I can't face this without you? Have you come to that place to recognize that you don't have what it takes to respond godly? You don't have what it takes to respond appropriately. Man, God, I reverence you. I don't want to go into this thing. I don't want to go and face this thing. I don't want to reply to that thing unless, Lord, unless, Lord, you go. Thank you. Exodus chapter 33, verse 15. Thank you. If your presence does not go, Moses responded to him, don't make us go up from here. Man, if your presence not going, Lord, I don't want to face this tribulation. I don't want to face this stressor. I don't want to face this circumstance. I don't want to face this thing that seems to bother me. I don't want to face this thing that gets to me. I don't want to face that every single day I go into my job and my supervisor tripping. Lord, I don't even want to go in there if your presence is not there. Lord, you know what? This person getting to me. Soon as I feel that it's getting to me, Lord, I'm going to reverence you. I don't want to face what's getting to me without you. Because I know that I'd probably go off. And I'm matter of fact, Lord, I'm on a brink. So, Lord, I reverence you. I humble myself before you because I don't want to go back in there. And I'm saying sometimes you need to go in the bathroom and say this. Confess this thing. Instead of taking all those selfies in a mirror at your job, how about you go in there and stall and start praying? Reverencing God. Okay, number two. Number two. How do I learn to be undisturbed? Number two. Discipline. 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 We have to learn to be disciplined. We have to learn to be disciplined. Discipline is so key when it comes to seeing the manifestation of God's presence in our life. The fruit that comes with the spirit. The fruit that comes with him. Discipline is key. And the thing about this is in learning how to be undisturbed. We reverence God one time, but we don't continue to reverence him all the time. No, you got to learn to be disciplined in your reverence. You got to learn that reverencing him becomes second nature. That becomes what you automatically do. Oh, man, I can't do that. Yes, you can do that. Remember when you got your new house or new apartment, you got that new address? It took you a couple of times at first, but now you know how to get to your house like the back of your hand. Matter of fact. If this street is packed, you know how to get around and maneuver around it because you have become disciplined to finding your address. You have become disciplined. This thing is familiar with to you. You don't no longer have to ask anybody. It be, it's like second nature you to get home now. You have to use your GPS to get home because you have been disciplined with the reverence of your address because that's the place where you live. So it's the same way with God. I have to learn to be disciplined to reverencing him when I face stressors, when I face things that bother me, when I face circumstances and tribulation. It can become a natural to me. It can become a natural reflex if I learn to be disciplined, if I continue to repeat that thing. 
They say that 21 days make a habit. And I'm just saying, if we start off by an act and let that act become actions, we do it multiple times, and then we do it consistently and let it become a habit. And as we continue a habit, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes our lifestyle. So again, we have to be disciplined with the reverence. And oftentimes, our issue is we're not disciplined. We're not disciplined when it comes to reverence. I do it one time or I only do it when I feel the need or I do it when, hey, you know what, when it gets out of control. No, I do it from the small things to the big things. I do it from the little thing that bothers me to the thing that bothers me a lot. You have to learn to do it all the time, no matter what, big or small, medium, it doesn't matter. No, God, I want you to have it all. I want to reverence you in, in it all. The problem with Ahab is he humbled himself one time, and then next thing you know, we see Ahab following Jezebel. We see him uh, reverencing all these other things, all those idol gods. And I'm saying that's how we are. We're like Ahab, but asking for a Moses-type blessing. Now, Moses like, God, man, I, look. Look, God, did Moses mess up? Yes, but you know what? Moses' heart, man, look, Lord, I messed up. Let me still sacrifice unto you. We got to be like David. David did what he did, but he like, you know what, God? I'm going to go in here and still worship you because my reverence is for you. And I'm disciplined with this thing. Even when I mess up, Lord, I'm going to repent and come back to reverence. Discipline. That he was so convicted when he messed up with God because of the reverence that he had for God. And he was disciplined in that. So anything that was offset of that reverence, man, he like, oh, no, I can't stay in that place. That's how we have to learn to be. In order to learn to be undisturbed, I got to learn to reverence him and be disciplined with it so it can become a natural. Imagine that God's presence is naturally in your situation. You always invite him in. When your flesh starts to rise up, man, naturally, I invite him in. That's how I learn to be undisturbed. It becomes a discipline for me. So it becomes a discipline for me. That's why the Bible says you can be undisturbed and it can be your lifestyle. It don't have to get to you like that. Don't listen to the lie of the enemy. And that goes me to my last point. Listening. Listening. Notice that the scripture says in 130, verse 33 says, wisdom says, if you just listen to me, if you just listen to me, if we just learn how to listen to him, we become disciplined with, to the reverence. Now, God, I'm listening. How do you want me to respond? God, okay, I'm listening. And in that listening, he can calm us down. In that listening, what was a fire, he says, I can calm your fire and make it a soothing fire. I can consume that fire and give you my fire to burn off your anger, to burn off that, uh, that anxiety. If you just learn to listen to me. Because in that time, many things are going to be speaking. Many things are going to be talking. And I have to learn in my reverence and being disciplined that I listen. And listen is not just hearing. Listening indicates a responding. And in that, I become disciplined because of who I reverence. And what do I invite in? God's presence. And nothing, uh, nothing surprises God. Nothing catches him off guard. God is always on top of the things because he knows the end from the beginning. So look who I invite in my presence at that time. He's always going to tell me and remind me. When I need to be reminded and tell me what I need to hear in spite of sometimes I don't want to hear it. Because God says, in that, you'll have my peace. No matter what. Because I listen. I'm listening, God. And when you think about listening, listening requires a patience. Listening requires a submission. You're still in that place, in that posture of reverencing and being disciplined. That God, I'm not going to move until I hear. I'm going to stay at bay. I'm listening, God. 
And I got to, I come to a place where I just want to hear his voice. I don't want to entertain those things that's telling me to act outside of my character that you have given you, your character. And I'm saying in all of this, we can learn to be undisturbed. It does not have to bother you like that. Matter of fact, that's a sign of itself that's saying that something has been off. And if you look at these three things, I'm telling you, one of those things are off. When you find yourself in a place where that thing get to you, where you, you can't even sleep at night, where you're now indulging in uh, ungodly things to get it off your mind. No, that means you're disturbed because you're trying to ignore the situation. No, God says, I never said to ignore it. So you're listening to something that's telling you that's the way to get over it. No, you have more reverence for that and you have become disciplined in that because that's who you're listening to, that who, that who has your ear. We can learn to be undisturbed. Today, Jesus said, each day has its own troubles, but yet it has its own troubles. But yet when Jesus was on the boat and the storm was going crazy, everybody else was acting a fool. But yet Jesus said, I can sleep because I'm undisturbed. The water becomes soothing waters that helps me sleep. And I'm saying if Jesus said, let that same mind that was in him be in us, we ourselves can learn to be undisturbed. No matter how the waters get, no matter how high, no matter how rocky the boat gets, the boat does not control who is inside of me. And if I learn to reverence him, if I learn to be disciplined and be continuously with this behavior of allowing myself to reverence him, and I listen to his voice, and listen it, I accept what he says because in what he says, that's the way to being undisturbed. Yeah, Lord, I don't understand it. Ooh, Lord, you want me to do that? But that's the way to be undisturbed. And I don't know how. It always brings me peace. So this is your morning medicine this morning. You don't have to let that thing today, some things you're going to face today, some things you're already facing, some things that you've allowed. But I'm saying you can go back to this and I'm saying that you can be undisturbed. You can be delivered from that very thing this morning and we can walk in a place of being undisturbed. Sometimes discipline takes time and consistency takes time. Yes, you'll fall short sometimes, but get back on that horse. Go back to reverencing. Go back to being disciplined to saying, you know what, I fell off. Okay, say <laughs> next time because I'm listening. And when you hear that and you're able to discern and able to move and say and recognize that you fell off and you're able to get back on, that means you're hearing. Now let's go back and apply it. Reverence him, be disciplined in it. Listen, Lord, I accept what you say and I will obey. Learn to be undisturbed because you don't have to be. Trust me when I tell you the enemy want us to be, but that does not mean you have to be. Stop giving him our peace. He don't deserve it. This is your morning medicine. Learn to be undisturbed. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Even this morning, I was hungry. And Lord said, why are you out letting that bother you? You didn't know I had breakfast on the way. Come on. This is your morning medicine. God bless you all.